Maxillary Denture Reline Procedure for Sharp Dental Lab. Please follow prescribed disinfecting procedures prior to proceeding. Step 1. Pouring up the reline. Materials needed, mixing bowl, spatula, measuring scale for textone, measuring cup for water, and textone. As we begin here, you'll see Debbie is about to uh, put the stone into the bowl. The bowl is on a scale. And the scale uh, will measure the weight of the bowl and the stone to the precise measurements that we need for the, for the powder itself. Then she measures out the water in a cylinder and adds it to the stone and begins mixing it in the bowl with a spatula. In this particular mix her stone's going to be a little bit runny and so she's going to add just a little bit of stone to the mixture. You want the consistency of the stone to be fairly stiff You'll now turn on the vibrator and set the bowl on top of the vibrator, pr putting pressure on top of the bowl. This will help the air bubbles to come to the surface. At this point you will uh, mix with a spatula to get rid of some of the air bubbles and put it on the vibrator again. She places a plastic uh, um, piece on the counter to keep the stone from sticking to the countertop and then turning the vibrator on again she will begin to put the stone inside of the reline inside of the impression. She begins by using a brush to incorporate small amounts of stone into the impression. Once she has it started there then she uses the spatula she'll get tiny amounts of stone place it onto the impression as she applies pressure to the vibrator. This will allow the stone to run down through the impression and begin to fill the impression. Once that's completed then she builds the the model up, the base up with, uh, with some remaining stone. Then she'll make a patty on the plastic uh, sheet that she's got there on the counter. She'll smooth it out with a spatula. And then she'll place the denture on top of the patty. She's taking away some of the excess uh, stone. Applies a little bit of pressure to put it down into the patty. Then she takes a plaster knife and goes around the denture and pushes the stone up to the heels of the impression. This is important especially on an upper denture that that stone comes all the way to the heels of the denture. She then proceeds around the denture with a knife to make sure that the stone has gone up around the borders of the impression and has filled all uh, little voids or any places where there might not be any stone. She also uh, tries to level out the, the denture as much as she can to make sure that it's uh, fairly level on the counter. After completing these steps, then she washes out her bowl and her spatula and brush and, uh, and lets them dry. Step 2 trimming the model and mounting on the reline jig. Materials needed, safety glasses, gloves, reline jig, mixing bowl, spatula, silicone spray, plaster, Bard Parker knife, and plaster knife. Once that the stone has set, we're going to do some trimming on the model grinder. She wets the model slightly and then begins to trim the, the model, the excess stone on the model grinder. One of the things that is critical at this point is that you be very careful as you grind around this denture that you don't hit the acrylic 
or don't hit the teeth that are on the denture. As you look down on the model grinder from the top, you can see where that wheel is coming to the stone, and it's important that you don't allow that wheel to touch the teeth anywhere or the acrylic. Once that's completed, you rinse off the denture, and with an air hose, you'll blow the denture dry. At this point, you'll take a Bard Parker knife and you're going to go around at the borders of the stone and the denture and begin to trim away some of the excess impression material. This is important, especially if the impression material has come over the teeth, that we trim the impression material away so that when we put the denture into the plaster index on the jig, that the teeth will create a good index in that plaster. If there's impression material over the teeth or in the way, uh, it will not create a good index in the plaster. And so at this point, we're just trimming away the impression material around the flanges of the denture, and then uh, we will trim the material away um, on the heel of the denture as well. Just try to be careful that you don't apply too much pressure with the Bard Parker knife and, um, and leave deep gouges in the teeth uh, or the acrylic. You want to just try to be as careful as you can. You also want to be careful during this stage that you don't dislodge the denture from the model. You want to make sure that that model stays in the denture and is not separated at this time. You do not separate the model from the denture until after it's been mounted on the reline jig. At this point, you take some silicone spray and spray on the teeth um, on the denture itself so that it will release from the plaster when we have put it on the jig. You take the reline jig, remove the nuts from the top, take the lid off of the top, and then you'll get a piece of the plastic sheet material and put on the countertop so that uh, it does not stick to the countertop. You also want to make sure that the posts in the jig are secure, that they're not loose and that the nuts fit will screw down on the jig uh, easily without much problem. If that's not the case, then please notify someone that that, uh, that that is not the case. At this point, we're going to mix some plaster in the bowl. As you can see, uh, you just use about oh, a scoop and a half or so of plaster. This is just kind of a, an eyeball mixture. And as you notice here, you simply uh, begin to mix the plaster and run it under uh, there's a little stream of water coming out of the faucet. It's not on very much. And as uh, you mix it, you add a little bit more as you need it. And you want the consistency of this plaster to be fairly stiff because you want the denture to be able to sit up on the plaster without sinking in clear down to the bottom when you put it in this patty. So it needs to be a, a fairly stiff mixture. So we're just adding a little bit of water here until the mixture is uh, where we want it. You can see here that uh, the mixture is, is fairly stiff. It's uh, about the texture of probably icing for a cake or something like that. At this point, you take a patty of the plaster, put it on top of the hole in the bottom of the jig, and then with a knife or with a plaster a spatu spatula, you form the, the glob of plaster into a patty on that bottom part. Then you take a plaster knife and just cut an area in the 
heel of the patty there where the opening of the denture will be. This is just, it helps keep the acrylic from sticking back there when we pack the denture. Then we're going to just place the denture on top of the patty with light pressure so that it, those teeth will sink down in the plaster slightly. You don't want to bury them, you just want to put them in there slightly. As you notice, uh, just kind of tap it a couple of times on the top and that's what it looks like. It's just uh, centered in the middle of the jig and, uh, and ready to go. This is the, the uh, putting of the top part of the jig onto the reline. Once again, you just simply mix your plaster in the bowl as you did before, mixing it to the consistency that you want, which is the same consistency that you had before, a fairly stiff mixture. And then you'll take a, just a little bit of water on your fingertips as you uh, get ready to put this on. You'll see here shortly. And just kind of lightly put it on top of the model there. This helps the plaster to adhere to the stone uh, model that we've got in the denture. You're going to place that patty on top of that making sure that there's enough to come up past the threads on the post but you want to keep it in the middle of the jig you don't want to get it squashed out on both sides just pile it up in the middle then take the lid and press it on top and the, some of the material is going to squish up through the hole in the top and that's what you want you'll take the nuts and place them on top of the jig and tighten them down they don't have to be cranked down really tight but you do want them very snug and then you'll just take a knife and flatten out the plaster on top and that completes putting the top on. Now as you can see the important thing to look at here is that those nuts are all the way down and the, the lid has seated completely on those posts. If it isn't at that point then do not proceed. Step 3 separating the denture and preparing the denture for acrylic materials Please review this list of materials needed and make sure you've gathered them at the workplace. We're now going to open the jig after the plaster has set. We're going to take the top off of the, the jig and the denture along with it. Make sure that the index, the teeth have made an index in that uh, lower uh, patty on the jig and that the denture is uh, still in place. We're now going to very carefully with a plaster knife just pry up on the heel being careful not to scrape the model and remove the denture and the impression from the model and there you have the model of the patient's uh, upper arch. We're now going to um, peel out the impression material from the denture. In some cases this material doesn't come out that easy and has to actually be dug out with a knife or ground out on the lathe. We're now going to begin the procedure of removing some of the acrylic from the inside of the denture in preparation for the reline. We use the large lathe burr, turn the lathe on high and with a suction unit begin to go on the inside of the denture and remove some of the acrylic. You want to apply fairly good pressure so that you're removing the material from the denture. We don't want to just roughen up the surface, we actually want to remove some of the acrylic so that we can apply the new acrylic into the reline. You continue around and down inside the denture to get all of the areas that you can. Be careful to hold on to the denture so that it doesn't grab hold with the burr and flip out of your hands. Continuing to move the denture at different angles so that that burr can get in there and get the material removed. The bulk of the material can be removed with this burr on the lathe.
We're now going to move from the lathe to the handpiece with the 84T burr in the handpiece. We're going to go inside the denture where the larger burr on the lathe could not, could not fit. And we're just going to go in and continue to grind out any areas that you see that are shiny that have not been removed at this point. You'll go in with the 84T burr and remove those areas and remove and relieve some of the more of the acrylic from the inside of the denture. Depending on the impression material that the doctor uses, you have to be sure that you get all of the impression material out of the inside, sometimes in the little, little um, recessions and divots inside the denture. Some of the clear impression materials can kind of hide down in there, and you have to make sure that you get down in there with the burr and remove all of that material before we pack the new acrylic in. Now we're going to go around the borders of the denture, and where you have room, we want to go about three quarters of the length of that 84T burr down the borders of the denture on the outside and just roughen the surface. We're not removing much acrylic here. We just want to take the shine off. This will allow the new acrylic to adhere to the old acrylic when we when we put the acrylic inside the denture. If we don't do this procedure then the um, when we polish the denture there will be a distinct line where the old acrylic and new acrylic meet. And I'm also going around the borders of the denture right on the very top here and just lightly taking the shine off there so that the entire denture is, uh, has been roughened up, especially in the inside as the had acrylic removed and on the outside surface has been roughened up. We're now going to take a large round burr in the handpiece and go inside the denture once again and just simply make sure that we get all of those areas. Sometimes this this burr works really well to get down on the inside to make sure that all of those areas have been relieved very well inside the denture. And at this point, the denture is ready to be packed with the new acrylic. Now we're going to move on to the model and prepare it uh, for the new acrylic. We're going to now uh, determine where the post dam or post palatal seal will go. We place the denture back on the model and it's going to fit kind of loosely, but it will fit down uh, in the original position that it was was on the model. We're going to take a Bard Parker knife and we're going to just go along the heel of the denture and scribe along the heel on the model, just make a line where that heel of that denture goes. And you can see on the model the scribed line there. It's a very light line. We're going to take now a red pencil and we're going to begin to define the area of the post palatal seal or the post dam. We're going to come about five millimeters above that scribe that we had made and we're just going to trace along a line parallel with that line that we marked on the model. The purpose of this particular uh, bead on the back of the denture is so that the palate will seal and create a better suction. We're now going to create kind of it's almost a reverse bow um, on the heel of that denture from the line that we made. We now now create um, the two loops there um, coming off that line. We're going to now put a number eight round burr into the handpiece and we're going to just go along that red line that we've just made. The depth that we want will show momentarily uh, when we actually when we get done doing this. We want to go about half the depth 
of that number eight round burr. So apply the pressure on the burr and trace that line along there going about half the depth of that burr. You can see here on the model that we're just following that line along. Notice that as I hold the handpiece I also brace my hand against the model with my finger so that I can keep the handpiece steady. And then follow those two loops that go up into the palette. The same on this side. You don't want to go too deep. Um, take an air hose and blow off the model so you can see. Inspect it and make sure it's the depth that you want. And you can see here as I hold the Bard Parker blade to just about half of the depth of that burr is about how deep you want that groove to go. Now we're going to take a wax spatula. We're going to take the uh, the pointed end of a wax spatula and we're going to just go along and lightly scrape that groove to just kind of smooth it out and make it uh, make it nice and smooth so there aren't any burr marks or anything in that groove. We also inspect the model to make sure that there aren't any bubbles or voids. If there are, we need to fill them with some blockout material. And if that's the case, then you need to, to let someone know so that we can do that. And this model is ready to be packed. This step is one of the most critical steps in completing the reline. We're going to begin by taking some Vaseline on our fingertip and just going along and putting it on the facial surfaces of these denture teeth. This will keep the new acrylic from um, sticking to these denture teeth when we pack the acrylic into the denture. <clears throat> Assemble your instruments together. Uh, you're going to need some uh, the instruments listed at the beginning of the uh, section and uh, you can see here the separator, the mixing uh, cup and the acrylic powder, liquid, everything that you need. We're going to start by taking the uh, measuring cup for the acrylic powder <clears throat> and we're going to dump the acrylic powder into the uh, measuring cup to about oh, 22 to 23 um, cc's or milliliters on that measuring cup. We kind of tap it to level it out and you can see there uh, it's basically where we're at right around 21 to 23 in there. We're going to pour the powder into the Dixie cup. Next we will measure out the acrylic liquid and we'll do this with a glass tube. You can't pour the acrylic liquid into uh, plastic because it will melt it. Uh, we're blowing out any debris from the from the measuring tube and we're going to take the acrylic liquid now and we're going to measure out about seven and a half cc's or milliliters of the acrylic liquid. During this time it's important that you have your vacuum hood going so that it uh, takes those fumes out. We're going to pour the liquid into the powder and with the mixing spatula we're going to mix that together. It should be a, a doughy consistency. <clears throat> and we're mixing it in front of the hood so that the fumes will will be evacuated out of the lab. We just mix it till it's, all of the particles are incorporated and and that it's a nice uh, nice homogeneous mix. We set that aside. We're going to now take the separator. We're going to squirt some all over this model. <clears throat> we 
This is a very important step. You cannot forget to put separator on this or you can't get the denture off of the model after it's packed. So it's important to remember this step. We're going to take the separator brush, fan out the bristles, and then we're going to just spread that separating liquid all over that model. Getting it down in all the little grooves and crevices and everywhere. <clears throat> we're also going to take a little bit of separator and put it on that lower index plaster index so that the material that squishes out won't stick to that plaster index. And we're going to actually take an air hose and blow the excess off of that. We're now going to take one of the small dappen dishes and fill it with acrylic liquid. We're going to dip our finger into that liquid. That's why it's important you have gloves on and we're just going to rub that liquid all over the denture on the inside first and then all around the borders. This allows the new acrylic to fuse to the old acrylic. If you don't do this you have a line where the old and new acrylic meet when you finish that reline. So you just uh, put a little on there and then you put that denture into the index as shown. Make sure that those teeth are seated completely in the index, that you don't have any little pieces of stone down in there that can cause it to, to not seat properly. We're going to take about two-thirds of the mix of this um, doy mixture of the acrylic, take it out and form it into a ball in our hands, and then <clears throat> we'll form it into a rope. Just guesstimating how much you're going to need to go around the inside of that denture. And you just kind of gently put that rope on the inside of the denture, as such. Then we're going to take about half of the mixture that's left in that, uh, in that mixing cup. We're going to uh, spread it out, roll it into a, a ball, and then spread it out and put it over the palate, the soft palate area of the denture. So that denture is completely covered with new acrylic. We're now going to take a brush and re, um, not put any more uh, separator on, but just go around and smooth that separator out, reapply it with that brush, take an air hose and blow the excess off. We don't want to get it too dry. If you blow too much on these models, the separator will actually dry and start to peel off. <coughs> So you want to just dry it off, make sure that the model is still wet from the separator. And then at this point, we're going to take the remaining amount of acrylic that's in the, in the Dixie cup. We're going to make it into a rope. And we're going to place it around the borders in the anterior of this model, as you can see here. Just kind of pushing it into those areas with your fingertip as such. The next step is to place the top part of the jig with a model on it into the denture. And when you do this with an upper you want to kind of angle it so that the front part um, goes down and into that denture and then you work it down onto those posts you take the nuts from the jig and place them onto the posts. Tighten them down all the way. Make sure that those posts, the lid is completely down on those posts, that you can't tighten them any further. You'll see the material is squished out all the way around the denture, which is what you want. <coughs> Next, we're going to take the nuts back off of the posts, and we're going to remove the lid with the denture in place. Notice how I hold the jig upside down so that the model will, so that the denture will come off with the model. I set the Dixie cup aside and then with my finger I dip it into the acrylic liquid 
and I begin to actually mold that material um, around the borders of that denture. I'll first go around and make sure that the acrylic's up off of the teeth. That's where the Vaseline comes in handy. And as you can see here, we're just dipping our finger in that acrylic liquid and we're just pushing that material out towards the borders away from the teeth and just kind of forming it into the contours that that denture will need to have. We could do this all the way around <clears throat> the denture. Peel off the excess material. Just place it in the Dixie cup. Go around the heel of the denture and do the same thing. If there's any voids that you can see where the material has not completely packed in, with your finger you can just kind of push that material in there and fill those voids in so that you can see all the way around the denture that it has um, filled in every, every place that there is. I'm now just taking a wax spatula and going around where the acrylic kind of squished down on the teeth and I'm making sure that that material is all off of the teeth while it's still um, moldable like this. Once it sets up it's really difficult to get off the teeth so here I'm just kind of making sure that uh, that there isn't any acrylic down on those teeth and it's kind of pushed away from the from the gingival area of those teeth. It makes polishing it a lot easier. If you see any in between the teeth, you can take that uh, spatula. I noticed, noticed that you uh, dip it in the acrylic liquid uh, so it doesn't stick to the spatula, and then just push that material up and out of the way and clean it out from around the teeth. We're now going to put the denture back on the jig in the same way we did before, only this time it's just going to fit right down in that index. <clears throat> Make sure once again that those teeth are exactly into that index. We don't want any discrepancy at all. Then you take the the reline nuts and you put them back on the posts and screw them down as tight as you can get them. Next we're going to uh, fill our our pressure pot. As you can see there's a, a line marked one half and max. We're going to take hot water from the tap and fill it to the half line. Make sure that the water is hot that's coming out of the tap. And there you can see it's at the halfway mark. You don't want it any fuller and you don't want it any, any less. You take the jig and immerse it in the water. Place the lid onto the pressure pot. Make sure that it's closed properly. You can hear it click. Put the lever down, the air release lever down, and then apply about 22 pounds of pressure with the air hose. For this step, you can see the major uh, tools you're going to need. You're going to need your lathe burr, the lathe wheel, a rubber wheel. That's a number, number 84T handpiece burr. And that's simply a number 8 round burr. We're going to begin by um, releasing the air pressure in the uh, pressure pot. That's done by taking the, the release lever and pushing it into the uh, pushing it straight up so that it releases that uh, that air pressure out. You can see the lever there is closed and when we push it up the air pressure uh, is <coughs> released from the from the pressure pop. You push the button on top of the handle and then you'd simply push the uh, the lid to the right and it will un unlock and then you can take the uh, reline jig and the denture out of the pressure pot. We begin by removing the nuts from the posts, just taking them off and taking the the top part of the jig off of the index. <clears throat> and then we're going to very carefully with the plaster knife um, lift up on this denture and try to get it to separate from the model. This one came off very easily. You can see that there's some flash around the borders of that denture from packing the acrylic, which is uh, 
exactly what you wanted. You don't want any big voids inside where there wasn't enough acrylic. You want that material to be thick enough so that it squishes out and leaves a little bit of flash around that denture. We're going to begin finishing the denture by placing the lathe wheel in the lathe. Of course the vacuum hood is on. You'll turn the lathe switch to high and you're going to begin at the heel of the denture holding with the teeth down and away from you grinding off the flash of this denture. Just take it nice and easy and slow. Always be aware of where the teeth are on the denture so that you don't hit those teeth with this wheel. We're just doing the bulk removal of this flash material off of the denture, going around to the heels of the denture the, and uh, trimming off the, the flash there as well. We'll also use this wheel. We turn the denture now with the teeth facing you and uh, go around and also remove some more of the bulk from that flash and begin to contour the borders of the denture, um, basically just blending the new acrylic into the old contours of the denture. <clears throat> you have to once again be careful that you hold the denture securely and that you don't allow the wheel to hit any of the teeth. Once that bulk removal is done we're going to take the lathe burr, place it into the lathe and holding it with the uh, heel away from you we're going to begin a little more removal of that material and also blending the new acrylic into the old acrylic. You can see where there's a um, kind of a hump around there where that flash material is squished out and we're just simply going around with this burr and we're smoothing one into the other. You want to be careful that you don't get the borders too thin. You want to try to maintain the border thickness a minimum of about the thickness of a nickel, a coin, a nickel coin. You want to think of the the thickness of a nickel is about ideal. Some places might be a little thicker, some a little thinner, but that's generally what you want. We're just going around now and refining the the denture. We're taking off any of the flash and smoothing in any of the areas, any rough areas, just kind of contouring that the borders of that denture the way that we want them to be. The borders of the impression determine how the the borders of this denture Will, will come out whether they're thick or thin or um, how they'll be contoured so you just kind of follow what's already there. We're now going to place the 84T burr into the handpiece and refine a little bit further. Just kind of develop those contours um, smoothing the down towards the teeth and into the gingiva you can see how we're just kind of going along and creating those contours. You just want to apply light pressure with the handpiece and keep moving the handpiece so that you don't gouge a, a big divot in it somewhere. You just kind of want to keep light pressure and moving it back and forth so that it it uh, makes the, the acrylic smooth. And we'll just continue to do this all the way around the borders of the denture. Just kind of visually inspect it as you go along to make sure that it looks like those contours all flow together. You want to make sure that the heel of the denture is not too thick and that if you need to you can thin it out a little bit back there with that burr. And it's important that you do this over the vacuum hood because all of these, the little uh, flakes will be sucked away. Right here I'm taking my finger and running it inside the denture to fill for any nodules that might be in there. If you can fill any with your finger, then you can imagine what you could fill with the roof of your mouth if you were wearing that denture. So if you fill any nodules, sometimes there will be little bumps or bubbles. Take your handpiece with that number 84T burr and simply go inside the denture and relieve them. Just take it lightly with light pressure and, and just grind them off so that you don't have any of those rough edges in there. <clears throat> right now I'm taking a, a Bard Parker blade and I'm going around the right at the margin of the teeth where the teeth enter the tissue and I'm cleaning off any little bits of flash of acrylic that might come down on those teeth when we packed it. 
This again is where the Vaseline is really helpful because you can take that Bard Parker blade and you can pop off little pieces of um, the acrylic that have now hardened and they just pop right off those teeth. They don't give you any problems. Continuing to just contour in around those teeth. Um, there again, you're just blending the contours of the old acrylic uh, denture into the new uh, acrylic that you've packed in there. And that's pretty much um, ready for the rubber wheel and final polishing. Uh, at this point you would check, have that checked so that everything looks okay. And then we're going to place a rubber wheel into the hand piece. And we're going to go around and begin to just smooth out some of the rough um, areas where we've ground on it with the burrs. With this um, rubber wheel it's important that you keep moving it, that you don't let it sit still. And you don't have to apply very hard pressure and you don't have to go very fast. Uh, in fact, if you have your foot control, if it's the wheel is going too fast, it'll begin to um, <clears throat> almost melt the, the acrylic and you'll get little white streaks as you're polishing. So if you're getting little white streaks, you've probably got the rubber wheel going too fast. So slow down a little bit on your foot control and just keep moving that around and uh, very patiently going around to smooth out some of those uh, burr marks and grinding areas that we've uh, ground on it with the burr. <clears throat> Here again we're just uh, smoothing the old acrylic into the new acrylic and uh, making these areas nice and smooth prior to uh, the pumice polishing that we'll be doing. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth but you do want to to have a nice smooth surface it'll make your polishing with the pumice much much easier uh, than trying to take all these little scratches out with the pumice. Uh, this goes a lot faster. And this denture is ready for the final pumice polish. I'm going to blow it off and do a visual inspection to make sure everything looks okay and then th that this denture is ready for the final polishing. As you can see the borders are, are all maintained. Uh, you haven't, we haven't trimmed it too thin anywhere. It's basically the same areas that was defined in the impression. Now we're going to take uh, some water in a bowl and go into the uh, to the, the pumice wheel. We're going to put a little bit of water on the wheel and turn it so that it wets the wheel and then pour some on the pumice. And here we want the pumice to be um, kind of a muddy texture so that it sticks to your fingers but so that it's uh, good and moist. And we're going to turn the lathe on high with the switch and be sure you put your hand over the wheel and then when you push on the foot controller down on the floor it will come on and if you don't put your hand over the wheel it'll spray you in the face. So that keeps the water from flying off the wheel and just spraying all over you. We're just going to begin by um, on the heel of the denture placing some pumice on the denture and then going around and smoothing those areas that we've ground. It's critical and very important that you don't actually pumice the teeth themselves. As you're looking down on this denture when you're polishing it, you can see exactly where the wheel is polishing. You can come right up to the base of those teeth as you can see here, but you do not want to hit the teeth. You want to stay away from the teeth. If you allow that pumice to hit the teeth, you're going to take all of the anatomy out of the teeth and, um, and begin to grind them away. And We don't want to do that. So here again, we're just going around the borders of this denture, starting at one side, going around to the back, and then coming from the back around to this side again, <clears throat> putting little pieces of um, pumice on there as we need, and uh, we can go along also in the, the palatal area in the back. Make sure that you come up into the pallet where we've ground. Anywhere we've ground with the burr or with the rubber wheel, we need to pumice so that we can polish all of the little scrape scratches and and scrapes out that we that we created with the burr. We want to make these areas nice and smooth. Here again, be careful not to hit the teeth. Now we're going along the very top of the border. We're actually holding the denture almost at a 90 degree angle at the wheel and we're actually polishing the top of those uh, that border with the pumice. This will smooth out the the top of that border and, uh, and make for a nice smooth feel for the patient. 
you can apply fairly good pressure in doing this because this pumice will will polish and remove some acrylic but you do have to apply some pressure to get it to work we're now going to switch it uh, the lathe to low and we're going to just very lightly go on the inside of the denture just lightly and then we're also going to start and just very lightly go around on the teeth as you can see I just hit it a little bit as we go around and that's good enough we're going to take it now over to the uh, sink and rinse the pumice off at this point you do an inspection to make sure that everything looks like it's it's polished well that there are no scratches and that, there, that the surfaces are smooth then we are going to turn the lathe back to high and this time we're going to use instead of the pumice wheel we're going to use the rag wheel with the polishing compound so we actually take the polishing compound turn the lathe on and then hit the the rag wheel with the, with a polishing compound so that it gets a little bit of that material on the wheel we're going to start the same way we did polishing with the pumice start with the with the back of the denture move around <coughs> you keep moving it and moving it so that it's not in one place here again you don't want to really hit the teeth you want to stay away from them um, you go around and polish everywhere that you you polished with the pumice with this rag wheel and then you turn it over and do the borders as we're showing here to finish off the polishing of this denture we're going to turn the lathe to low again and then we're going to just lightly go over the teeth very lightly just apply light pressure so that it gives a little bit of a polishing shine to those teeth maybe into the palate a little bit sometimes a felt wheel will will polish better on low up in the palate and there we have a completed reline we take that reline and we're going to just uh, put it in the um, ammoniated cleaner and the ultrasonic we're going to turn it on about um, five on the dial and let that clean when the reline is completed you'll take it out and rinse it off and then it will be placed in a baggie with some mouthwash and uh, ready for delivery of course we'll need to be inspected to make sure that it meets quality control and that everything is uh, looks good on the denture We're going to place a little bit of mouthwash in a quart sized uh, baggie it's important that we use alcohol free because if you don't the alcohol can actually begin to weaken the acrylic uh, in the denture you don't have to put much in the baggie just a little bit in the bottom and then when that uh, when that comes out we just simply rinse it off in water inspect it to make sure it looks good <clears throat> and then place that in the baggie and seal it up <clears throat> 